Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So today we have got an EV charger and a new hob circuit to install. Now all the house is all done and dusted so we are running this stuff externally. Um, so what we're going to be using is some fantastic cable from Doncaster Cables. Now the difference as you'll see later on throughout the video by using a premium cable to a non-premium cable um, is just breathtaking I'll be honest with you it makes a massive difference but anyway now you'll see you'll see as we go so today as we're doing it so we've already installed the new consumer units we did that previously um, hopefully the weather is good to us which hopefully hopefully so Lewis is with me today as well and he is currently drilling through on the inside out ready to get the uh, the hob cable installed so we're going to show you how we're going to go about doing that and making sure it's nice as neat as possible the plan is that we're going to run the cables down through here um, and feed them all the way back now we've got guttering that we've got to go around we've got the um, BT phone line that's coming in we've got to make sure we go round those plan is to go up we're going to up over the top of this garage we're going to clip it all in fire clips now this is the clips that we're going to be using so we're going to be using some fire rated clips we're also going to get in the spit nailer and hopefully that will take care of the job in hand to make a nice neat finish um, depending on how nice these bricks want to play so i'm going to get myself all set up get the spit nailer out and show you what that does the actual spit nailer itself um, it uses a it's about the same principle as the nail guns but what it does it shoots nails like this into brickwork into masonry um, and the idea is then we're going to fire that through into the clip that's going to be neat nice and round and take care of that now it's an extremely powerful bit of kit so make sure you wear your safety equipment um, can't stress that enough now it does obviously different you get different fixtures and fittings and all the rest of it to do different jobs and things like that so but anyway enough waffling got to get on Okay, so we've got our clips put in along the wall here. Um, we've now gone across the head and we're gonna just basically loosely, loosely put those in. Um, now the cable from Doncaster Cables um, is just way more malleable um, than what we've ever previously used. So it makes a huge difference um, in fairness. So when you're trying to get your curves and things like that sorted, it's just so much better so so much better um, so what we're going to do we're going to throw this up now and leave it long to, to, to do the side so Lewis is just doing all of the clipping outside so I'll take you outside and go and show you how he's doing that okay so the clips basically are going to be like that all folded in so what Lou is doing is he's gone all the way down folding it folding it he's fixing them all on so we've got a drain pipe here um, another drain pipe going around this way and then we've got some bit of a shrubbery another drain pipe and then it leads back down to to there um, so got the run tech on the go which makes a massive difference on there for the armored nice and easy so Lou's finding it better having putting all of the clips in like you say like this so we're going low level first on there um, and then that should be a nice tight fitting then all the way through um, and then we'll sort of dress these in and then we've got the EV charger which is then going to go above that and run round and then that is going to fit on the side just past this drain pipe here so it's going to be somewhere like that uh, we're going to fit that on there so loads to do and uh, you know hopefully the weather stays uh, stays nice so the cables are in Lou's just fixing them all up now and just getting them round um, now again it's a nice warm day which does help anyway but trying to get your radiuses on for your cables around a tight end again with a lower quality cable I know I keep banging on about it with a lower quality cable it just doesn't do that it, it, it just splits and all sorts of stuff so Lou's just working his way around customers just brought us a cup of tea out fantastic um, and then I've just mounted up the zappy so we're going for a tethered zappy because the car is literally just here um, that we're using so that is where that's going to be going it's just white front on here so I thought I'll try and mount this up while Lou's getting on with don't pull that out 
That's a that's a lavender. Just tuck it behind. Oh, you might have to. I'll have to ask them first, but if not, we'll have to push it down. See, so, look, gardening tips as well on here. Um, so, so we're going to go down here, and then basically just there is where Lou's gone through from underneath the board. So we're going to get that sorted. So the run tech. I just thought I'd show you this quickly. So the run tech. It's absolutely wicked. Um, run protect, sorry, on the X board. But the reason why it's so good is because obviously some of the drums of cables that you get are ridiculously heavy. And obviously the bigger you go up in scales, you're, you then have to get cable jacks and all the rest of it. So you, it eliminates all that. So with this, it just sits on, and obviously the cable doesn't, you know that annoying thing with the cables where it just drops off, really irritating, especially if you're working on your own. Now there's that, and also, that goes along with it is this wonderful bit of kit. So, so this, let me bring you in here. So, this obviously opens out, and you put your drums okay with your normal drums, like two and a half mil and all the rest of it, on there, and it stops the cable flapping about. So that just sits on top, and then obviously depending on your cable depth, you can adjust that. Really, really cool. So yeah, so I'm, I'm really, really chuffed with that, in fairness. So let's get, so the next plan now is, like I said, I've not put that bottom clip on at the minute because I've got to get another cable through. So I'm going to run the cable back in reverse now. I'm going to put the Ultra EV on. Um, so we're going to put the Ultra EV in. Get that back round, then we're going to try and keep it as tight to this one as possible. Um, and then see where Lou's already drilled through the hole just there. Um, hopefully, then get that all sorted. Nice and neat, because the weather is beautiful. And uh, like I say, we've got the best of both worlds, in fairness. So we've got my dream car, absolute dream car, um, here, which is absolutely beautiful and I would love to own one of these one day you never know uh, and then we've got the electric hybrid version of the Audi as well for city living so perfect setup okay so like I said we've already previously installed this consumer unit and so we've already got the two spare ways we've got the EV charger and hob already in ready to go so we've now brought the cables back down to to this point so we're going to swoop them round and then get them in which is fantastic. And then, so just to give you a little overview of everything. So we've run down here, the weather started closing in. That's why we've had to sort of really hammer on and get that sorted. Um, so we've brought that all the way around here. And then I'm up to this point. So I'm obviously put the cover on properly and that's not energized or anything else like that. So the hob circuit is down. I've used a Hensel box this time. So in there, because I found with some of the whisker boxes, they seem, I don't know why, but they'd started to like smash on me. So they're a bit annoying. I don't know what's happened with that. So we're pretty much cracking on now, getting there, which is really, really, really good. So we've got a little bit of sealing to do down here where that comes through. And then Lou has, hopefully you can see that all right. So we've clipped that all the way along the top and then dropped down next to the board. And that's where we're at, at the minute. So as usual, while I'm filming, there's always something going on. So they've got the council there doing, deciding to do um, some mowing of the lawn. Why wouldn't you? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the power off, um, get the bottom of the cables all ready to go, all dressed in. Um, Lou's gone off to go and get some more conduit and stuff because we've got to do some more projects here and uh, do with the internet and stuff, which may you may be shown, you may not do, depending on the client because of what he does for a job. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to try and get this all took off now and get it all sorted uh, and try and get as prepped as possible and then ready for energizing uh, get the customer because obviously we're doing the uh, ev charger get the customer to download the app before i turn all the power off um, would probably be a good idea so if you're at that stage now make sure you get your customer to download the app so they're all ready and fill all that in it will save you some time
As with any installation, it is really important, obviously, and a, a legal requirement for obvious reasons, that you test your work um, and obviously you're able to self-certify. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do our dead test. So we're going to do an R1 plus R2 test, which is essentially going to measure the resistance in the cable from here all the way down to the charger, which is obviously on the outside. Um, so by doing that, we're linking the live and the earth at this point, or CPC if you really want to be particular about it, the line and CPC. Um, so we're going to go down and measure that end and obviously making sure that that end is not connected into the charger because the next test we're going to do is an insulation resistance test. Now, I won't bore you with about going through them all, um, but the insulation resistance test, what that does is you fire down 500 volts as a new installation and it measures what basically comes back. Um, and obviously ideal and perfect result will be 999, which is what I'd be expecting this because it's a brand new install. Now. Sometimes, just a, a little side note on insulation resistance. Now, if you have got a new install that you first fixed and it's all been plastered and all the rest of it and it's still damp in the air, you don't be surprised if you get lower readings than 999, just to bear that in mind. So, testing time. <sighs> no. I swear they does it to annoy me. He knows I'm filming. So anyway, hopefully you can hear it enough. Um, so one of the things you need to make sure is obviously that your leads are nulled and they've not got any resistance left inside. So at the minute, I've got a resistance of 0 0.17. So null that, obviously it takes the resistance out of the leads. So you click it on the other end of the earth and the live, and you're measuring the resistance. Now I've got a resistance of 0 0.13. I can put all that back together. So for the insulation resistance test is the same deal really, that we just gotta make sure that nothing on here is linked because it's a new installation, so we'll get rid of that. And we've set our meter to 500 volts and then we're literally gonna be going through, so earth to live, press and hold, and it should come up 999. Okay, so then we go over to our earth to neutral, Nine 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 again, and then finally we'll go our neutral to live, and as expected, nine nine nine. So we now know that the cable has got no damage in it. It's a low enough resistance reading, and obviously now we need to enter that into our certification to make sure we've got the installation that is absolutely spot on in the dead test form. Okay, so we're now coming to the end of this job. Um, so one of the little tips there, obviously using that stud buddy just to hold the cover up. So you may notice that I've changed the RCBO in here. So, um, and now these are the mini RCBOs. And the reason why I've changed it is because the mini RCBOs are double pole switching, which is what you need um, as, a, as a basic requirement for your EV install. Um, so we've just done all our testing on that. We've also, put the hob circuit in as well. So we're now ready to go, because the hob's a 600 hob, and we're now gonna make it a 800, 900 hobs, I think, something like that. Um, and it's gas at the minute, and it's all gonna be all electric, which is fine. So we've now used, uh, put our swooping bends in, used the storm gland for the armored, uh, and I'm gonna take you around. We've just done the initial setup on the Zappi, and I'll just go through that with you right now. So I've just installed the Zappi now, just set that all up. So we have to get the Wi-Fi all working. Lou's just doing some of the actual other stuff now um, down there. So set up on here, we've gone for a white one. Um, so the actual initial setup is they all come with the Eco Plus setting, which is designed really if you've got solar and all the rest of it. So we've changed that to fast charging because they haven't got any of that. And they just want to instantly have to just turn in and, and, and uh, plug your car in. The good thing about the Zappi is that you can add more and more stuff to it, um, which makes a massive, massive difference. So obviously in the future here, they probably will have solar and power storage and all the rest of it. Um, so it's all geared up, ready to go. Now, on the initial um, 
setup you need to be putting inside here obviously what your main parameter is for your main incoming fuse so here we've got an 80 amp which is is more than sufficient if it was 60 obviously you need, they come preset as 60 amps to making sure that obviously you don't go over that so because it is already preset at 60 we need to change that to 80 which is what we've got once i notify the local dno it's up to them whether they see fit in making it up to a 100 amp incoming supply which i doubt very much because 80 is more than enough for this this installation and that's pretty much it um, once you've done there you'll always do a um, firmware update which it will do automatically as soon as you've connected to the wi-fi and that is pretty much that in, in a nutshell but it, overall the actual cable itself the ultra ev is absolutely fantastic bit of kit um, the armored that we've used at the bottom here um, just by using Doncaster cable, it, it, it's, it is a better product and you can tell that all the way through from down to simple things of just peeling the cable back and getting that all sorted. It just, it just makes life an easier installation. It feels nicer in your hands. It's more malleable as what Lou said um, and it is just a better, better product and it's something that we're going to be looking at using on a permanent basis um, it's worth spending a tiny tiny bit more in fairness it probably isn't that much more uh, than anything else just to get a better product and actually make your life a nicer one so hopefully you've enjoyed the video and if you have make sure you just subscribe link is in the corner and we shall catch you on the next one see you in a bit guys